of hepatitis B service elimination loss is very durable. And we learn this from data, be it a spontaneous loss, initial induced loss, or any induced loss. And about 95% of patients Hepatitis B service elimination loss is very durable. And we learn this from data, be it a spontaneous loss, initial induced loss, or any induced loss. And about 95% of patients will remain in S negative state on long-term follow-up. But among those patients who has S energy reverted back to positive, most of them have very low HPV DNA level, and most of them have very inactive disease that do not require treatment. So that's the reason why we usually use S loss as the marker for functional cure because most patients will have a very mild disease afterwards. Now with NA treatment, HPV DNA will drop very, very fast. But however, be it nuclear type or nuclear site analog, the HPV SAG is not directly affected. So most patients have a very flat HP SAG kinetics during NA treatment, and only a few of them may have a very fast decline in the first year. And it is those patients who have a very fast early HP SAG decline may have S loss uh, in, on subsequent treatments. And this account for usually less than 5% per year uh, of, uh, of treatment. And there's no hard data suggesting that whether ETV or TDF can lead to a faster or a higher proportion of S loss uh, during uh, NA treatment. So in my opinion, these two, two drugs are pretty similar in terms of the ability of inducing S loss. Now for, hep for hepatitis B cure, we usually aim for HPSHG loss, but we know that HPSHG loss will not happen in one to two years. But most early clinical trials have to decide, for example, from phase one to phase two, phase two to phase three, in one to three months. We, the biggest challenge of designing HPV trial nowadays is a lack of a reliable short-term biomarker that can tell us a go or no-go decision. Nowadays, most people re has to rely on markers of target engagement. For example, HPV DNA reduction, uh, HPV RNA reduction, or even a decline in HPV SAG. But however, if it is only due to target engagement, it may not predict reliably the chance of HPV SAG loss in the future. So this is one of the biggest challenge we have when we design a clinical trial for a new HPV drug. There are lots of new HPV treatments on the pipeline. In grossly, we can divide them into direct antiviral agents or immune moderators. Now today, it is too early to say which one is going to be the ultimate winner, but I believe that we may need a combination therapy in order to cure HPV. So my own personal opinion is we may need a very strong direct antiviral agent to block the transcription activities of CCC DNA. One example may be RNA interference. But we may also need to have an immune moderator to finish the, the clearance of virus inside the hepatocytes. Whether this immune clearance can be induced because of uh, the drop of viral products, or we need a to enhance the host interference is uncertain. So, I'm sure that more studies is required and probably we need combination therapy trials starting at phase two to address these questions.